Hey everybody, Navy Doc 5184 here and welcome to my next Star Wars Ahsoka reaction. We are reacting to part 6, Far Far Away. So, I tell you what, the last two parts have been absolutely amazing. Uh, between the lightsaber battle between Bane and Skull and Ahsoka. Um, everything that she went through in the World Between Worlds with Anakin. It was just so good seeing Anakin again. But it was also really great seeing how much he control he had when he went back and forth between you know his normal self going full on Vader mode and then being able to bring himself back all in an effort to help Ahsoka accept you know her part of the legacy of the Jedi which yes even though it did include Anakin falling you know what he brought you know as Vader um, her part in the Clone Wars and everything the fact that is she had to accept the fact that that was part of her life but it doesn't define her and that was what he was trying to get I mean even he was saying you know that she was more than that because he was more basically saying like yeah he fell he became Vader but that doesn't fully define him as a man and once she was able to finally get past that and you saw her kind of start to even embrace her own darkness but overcome it and when she finally said that she chose to live you know she finally got the whole thing and you could tell the change within her you know that she seemed to be more at peace more in tune basically in a way you know kind of being reborn you know and fully reconnecting with the force so I'm really looking forward to this part here to see the continuation of that because we know that they're using the Purgle um, to um, try to follow uh, Morgan Elsbeth, Balen Skull, and all of them uh, to find Thrawn and maybe even in the process to find uh, Ezra. So I'm not going to lie, it's part six. We So including this, we only got three episodes left. I fully expect this to be the episode where Thrawn finally returns. I'm really looking forward to seeing, you know, how that all works out, what he brings to the table, what is Balin Skull's, you know, endgame with all of this, and do we find Ezra, and also I'm also very curious to see how Ahsoka and Sabine handle, um, you know, the fact that she did so willingly gave the map to Balin Skull. Which really, in the end, means that Sabine made it possible for Thrawn to come back. But who knows what's going to happen. There are so many things that could happen. So I just fully expect that at the very least we're going to see Thrawn this episode. You know, I feel like this is really going to be the beginning of the major conflicts and everything. And um, I think we'll just leave it at that. So we'll go ahead and get started if you are a member and are... Um, gonna do the watch along you can use the timer on my um, bottom right hand corner to uh, use that as a timestamp to tell where I am in the show so you can be at the exact same point of it but uh, let's go ahead and get started with part six intergalactic travel within a star whale now I really have done it all <laughs> I remember them from the stories you would tell us when we were younglings back at the temple I still have those stories in my archive memory. Would you like to hear one? Not right now. There's something I didn't tell her about Sabine. She went with the enemy willingly. That is true. She did only say that they took her. She didn't really give the details of it. She could have ended this. No throne. No war. And no Ezra. That's the key right there. And I think she knows it. There wasn't enough time to prepare her to make the right one. Perhaps for Sabine, it was the only choice. I mean, he's not wrong. Tell me one of those stories. A long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away. Are you serious? <laughs> All right, so that first few minutes, I'm not even going to lie. That's a lot to unpack there that I'm going to have to get into when I get into the epilogue here. Because you can definitely tell that Ahsoka is bothered by that, and rightfully so. But I think she's at that point where she's not fully holding it against Sabine. I was hoping for a room with a view. You find your situation confining. A bit. That's putting it lightly. We had a deal. You promised me I would see Ezra again. And you trusted him, why? 
I think she I think she's really starting to see that she may have made a mistake. Her focus to find Ezra Bridger blinds her. I believe she can still be of some use to us. Kind of like how Anakin's, you know, pursuit to save Padme blinded him from what was going on. The ancient homeworld of my ancestors, the Dathomiri. The Jedi Archive spoke of this place. It was the end of the migration route used by the Star Whales as they traversed the void from one galaxy. So the Star Whales will take them to the... Perfect. The Whales came here to die. Heridia is a graveyard. Oh! Oh, that's a uh, ominous. So if that's the case, and Ahsoka and all them get there and do everything they need, how do they get back? It must be getting close. She's sensing something. Another one of those temple places. I recognize the layout a little bit. You do our ancestors credit. Thank you, great mother. You Ooh. heard our call to you in the dream. Your visions guided me across the stars. Oh. More witches. Yeah, that's what it seems. Where is Thrawn? You shall wait. He is coming. This is a land of dreams and madness. Children's stories come to life. Stories of this galaxy are considered folk tales. Some ancient past, long forgotten. He is nailing this character so well. Sometimes stories are just stories. I love how we can't get a full read on him. Fall of the Jedi, rise of the Empire. It repeats again and again and again. And knowing what's coming up, it's kind of crazy. Something's going to go wrong with what he's thinking because we know the force, the first order comes into being. But what's his plan is what I want to know. What am I doing? Come on, Speed. Come on. Oh, is she doing it? This is making me feel very uneasy. Oh, that's unique. Okay, this one has a name, so... Oh, hell. Oh. And Admiral Thrawn has entered the chat. There he is. What was first just a dream has become a frightening reality for those who may oppose us. I hate his voice. Not because I think it's bad, but because it is terrifying. He is too freaking calm and eloquent. I brought the prisoner. I felt she could be of some use to us. Then you must be General Balan Skull of the Jedi Order. Okay, I'm not gonna lie. I know that seeing Rebels would help me understand a whole lot more. But I think the fact that I haven't seen Rebels is making Thrawn more terrifying to me. <laughs> he is too freaking calm. I mean, his calmness, his eloquence, the way he's speaking, it just, I don't know why those type of villains just get to me the most, because you're just like, it always feels like they have the upper hand somehow. Thrawn. What a delight it is after so long to see a familiar face. Where's Ezra? Ah, uh, yes. 
How that singular focus would reshape our galaxy. Just answer the question. She really doesn't care right now, does she? You shall have provisions, amounts, and our latest intel on Bridges' whereabouts. You helped my cause. Now I shall help yours. I hate the way he's wording that. If you survived, I'm sure he's doing just fine. You've gambled the fate of your galaxy. On that belief. I'm going to say this. If Ezra is alive and she finds him, I'm wondering how he is going to, I guess, handle her decision. Because really, if you're looking at it from a logical point of view, she did pretty much gamble the whole New Republic just to find Ezra. She is on a fool's errand. Indeed. You may follow her at your own pace. Yes, Grand Admiral. Sabine Wren will have the opportunity of finding Ezra Bridger. And if she does, you and your master will destroy them both. There it is. Mofo playing chess to her checkers. Okay. Uh, who was that? Good thing you got that Beskar armor. You'd be dead three, four times over by now. Bust out your saber! You don't have a choice now. You ain't got no other weapon. There you go. Come on. I wonder if Ezra can give her any training. <laughs> objective is to escape this galaxy it matters not whether Ren and Bridge are killed or stranded here the same can be said for your two mercenaries and you know Morgan is not gonna do anything against Thrawn so I can't help but wonder if Balin senses this I'll give you another chance, but you better not bail on me this time. Got it? <laughs> what the? Hey. Oh, what the? Okay, what is that? Well, whatever it is, it doesn't look like it's a threat. No, no, it won't hurt you. Anyone else getting a Leia Ewok vibe with this? Wait. How is that possible? Ezra. Ezra, do, do you do you know Ezra? Okay, so Ezra is alive. So does that mean we're gonna get Ezra this episode too? I really wish I knew what y'all were saying. So has Ezra been living with these creatures? Do you know the one she seeks so desperately? Bridget? No. He's too young. Comes from a breed of Bokin Jedi trained in the wild after the temple fell. Do you miss it? The order? I miss the idea of it. But not the truth. The weakness. There was no future there. Can you clearly see one here? I'm kind of with Shin on this one. Something calls to me. Can't you hear it? Something stirs here. You know, every time I think I'm getting a read on Balin's skull, he just throws me another curveball. It's like I can't fully like him, but at the same time, I can't fully dislike him. It's like, what is your game? I knew I could count on you. There he is! So we got 
Thrawn and Ezra this episode. All right. Sure took you long enough. <laughs> well, you didn't exactly tell any of us where you were going. True. That's because I didn't know where I was going. So how are they Beautiful. supposed to find you, fool? Always a plan. Never a good one. Hey. It worked, didn't it? <laughs> it worked. It's almost enough to make me forget that she royally messed up. <laughs> I have so many questions. You're riding a hound. How'd that happen? In fact, how did you find me? <laughs> how did you get here? <laughs> Let's not talk about that. Not right now. That's kind of an important question to answer. I just want to be happy that I found you. After all this time, can I have that? You don't really have that much time to have that. Balin Skull is on your tail. Thrawn is not too far from leaving. Your only hope is that Ahsoka gets here really soon. Thanks for coming. Can't wait to go home. About that! The thread of fate has spoken to us. Okay. Another comes. A Jedi. Osaka. Ride the travelers. Morgan looks shook. Could it be the recently deceased Osaka Tano? Impossible. I thought it was beyond you to underestimate a Jedi. After Apparently not. Death and resurrection are common deceptions played out by both Night Sister and Jedi. I want to know her background, history, home world, her master, everything. Yes, Grand Admiral. If a star whale approaches Peridia, destroy it with prejudice. This dude is something else. The thread of destiny demands it, Grand Admiral. Oh. You cannot end it there. Okay, all that was part six of Star Wars Ahsoka Far, Far Away. Grand Admiral Thrawn has returned, but we have also found Ezra. So at least we got a little light with this, but boy, oh boy, where do we even start with this? A, it's weird at the fact that the title character is only involved for like the first four minutes of the episode. Not really any complaints. This really, like, with everything that went on there, that totally deserved all the attention. You know, I mean, what more could we really get from Ahsoka? Though I'm very curious on the story that Hu Yang told. Maybe we'll learn uh, when she gets there. But the one thing, at first, I was feeling a little disappointed at how Ahsoka was reacting, you know, in terms of Sabine. But I think. When I kind of look back on it now in retrospect, I feel like she kind of understood it a little more. Like, she understood that, you know, that she was, that Sabine was not prepared to really face that choice. And she, of all people, knows really what attachment can, can do. She saw what happened with Anakin. Now, even though, you know, she went through that thing with Anakin uh, in the World Between Worlds, the bottom line is it was his attachment to Padme that really... Well, not even just his attachment to Padme, but even to his mother. That really sparked his downfall. So she understood that, and that's why she wouldn't take Grogu on uh, to train him because of Grogu's attachment, um, you know, to Din Djarin. So she completely understands what that attachment would do. And yet, she was more focused, and I think she realized that that was her mistake, is she wasn't really preparing Sabine's mind per se she was more making sure that she was ready to fight you know I think had she gone through her thing with Anakin prior to ever starting to train Sabine she would have trained her better but I think because of everything that she was dealing with and was weighing her down I think really affected her training uh, Sabine 
So I don't think she really holds to being completely responsible for that, which I completely agree with because Ahsoka of all people really should have known better. The fact that the only reason Sabine was going to help them anyways was because there was a chance to find Ezra should have told her everything she needed. But she was so focused on trying to stop Thrawn that she herself, you know, couldn't see it. And that seemed to be a theme here is the single mindedness of like all the main characters here and how it's blinding them so much. You know, whether it's Sabine, whether it's Ahsoka, whether it's Morgan, or even going to the Senate, you know, and their single mindedness of just rebuilding this new republic that they are ignoring a very real threat of Grand Admiral Thrawn returning, which apparently is gonna to come to fruition. Now granted at the end of this we see that Ahsoka is close by so who knows what's gonna happen in the next episode but oh man and I do appreciate the fact that they brought some lightheartedness to this episode because it was definitely needed but boy oh boy I tell you what Thrawn is intimidating as hell and it's not even just his figure it's the way he carries himself his speech and everything and the fact that it's he has like so much planned ahead it's it's like I said when he when I, earlier when I said he's playing chess compared to Sabine's checkers it's just oof but I feel like he it's almost like he as soon as he saw Balin realized who he was I almost feel like he already has a plan in motion with them but what is Balin's endgame with this and what role is Shin gonna play in this there's still so many questions and we only got two episodes to get all these questions answered I mean oh man what what a series this has been and I'm not gonna lie I really kind of hope that the next couple episodes aren't like dreadfully short I mean based on uh the way past series have gone there's no telling but man oh man I'm not even going to lie, I almost, well, no, I haven't really found a way to really do live streams or this kind of stuff yet, so I am I was going to say maybe I should just save uh, part 8 and do it as a live stream, but uh, I don't think there's any real viable way I could really do that yet, so I won't, but I don't know. Maybe I'll make it a premiere so I can chat along with it with you guys, but holy crap, y'all, so much going on. And then Ezra, I'm very curious to see what Ezra has to say once he figures out what's going on and realizing that uh, Thrawn is about to return back to the galaxy. So I'm very curious to see how he's going to feel about that. But then again, what role is Ahsoka and Hu Yang going to play? And again, I still want to know what story Hu Yang told Ahsoka because Hu Yang has this way. I've noticed it, him do it with Sabine. I've seen him do it with Hera. He has this way where it's almost like he kind of like, I don't want to say tears them down, but it's like he throws off like a brutal truth where you're just kind of like, dude, are you really saying this to me right now? But then he follows it up with something to kind of bring it all together and realize it's like, but this is where, you know, I guess you could say, you know he finds the good in it because at first you're just like dude really and then he just the very next thing he says falls up it's kind of like okay you know what you're a real one dude and i feel like the story that he chose for Soka is probably going to do that for her and even he said it is for sabine that was probably really the only choice she had was to give the map to Balin and for them to finally go there but again that's something I've already touched on you know that she just wasn't prepared for it and I think Hu Yang was just trying to get in Ahsoka's head even though I think she already understood that she can't be too hard on him yeah Sabine really messed up but you know that's a hard decision for somebody to make for somebody who's not really prepared to make a decision like that so I, I really give a lot of credit to uh, the last episode because I think it really helped her grow and really I would say become more full I'm very curious to see what happens afterwards like does everything else happen in this galaxy or does everything go back I feel like everything's got to go back because I feel like that this is I feel like what we are witnessing right here is the birth of the first order but I don't know I, I don't know what they're going to do with it it's 
it's so well done that it's literally like since i would say part three even it has just been so hard for me to just sit and wait a whole week for the next parts to come out because there's so many questions i have and where are they going to go with this? What's this person going to do? What's that person going to do? What's this person's endgame? What role are they going to play in this endgame compared to this person? You know, and it's just... There's so many possibilities that I'm just trying very hard not to come up with any theories in my head and just let the story play out the way it is. And again, I love what they did with Thrawn. I mean, the way he is in this really makes me want to watch Rebels and see how he is in that show to see if they've really done justice to how he was in the animated series but i will say this good lord almighty he's probably one of my favorite villains already and i haven't really even seen him do much so i think that will probably do it for that uh hopefully next week i'll have a little bit more uh intellectual analysis on this because right now i'm so little uh shook from seeing thrawn for the first time seeing ezra come back and uh you know going to see what Ahsoka has in store for when she arrives but either way we'll go ahead and end it there I thank you guys for stopping by and watching this hope you all enjoyed the reaction as much as I enjoyed reacting to it and I will see you guys next week for part seven <laughs>